Alright, so we're going to talk about similarity in right triangles. Um, and then, again, remember, a right triangle is a triangle with a right angle. And if we have one angle in common, uh, then by our angle-angle uh, postulate, we're going to have similar triangles. So right triangles are a special case uh, where we're really just looking at one angle being in common. Um, but uh, it really does a lot for us because we can um, build all of trigonometry, trigonometry really from this idea, which we'll look at in the next chapter. So let's start with a theorem. Where I'm given triangle ABC is similar to triangle uh, ACD and triangle CBD. So what we want to do is to start with thinking about um, what are we talking about here. So I have an altitude, I have a hypotenuse, and then I'm dividing this triangle up. That's really what it's talking about. So let's look at those, those triangles that get divided up. I have the big blue triangle on the outside, and then that's that red triangle that they're talking about there, and then I have a green triangle right there. So what they're saying is that uh, those three triangles are similar to each other. And specifically, the red and the green are similar to the blue, which is the big one. So how did we get the blue one? Well, we looked at an altitude, and we looked at the hypotenuse. And so let's look at those words for a second. Altitude is perpendicular to the side, so from this vertex to the other side has to be perpendicular. And then the hypotenuse is the longest side of my right triangle, so it's opposite this right angle here. And so we've divided it up into uh, really three triangles that are similar to each other, but it's only the case when we do this from the out from the vertex here, from this sorry 90 degree angle, that vertex to the hypotenuse. And then we have something below that you may or may not have seen before. Uh, you've seen this word mean before to, to represent an average, right? We have something a little different here called a geometric mean. And it'll pop up as we go through this. And so if we have two numbers, A and B, then X is our geometric mean. And it's given by this proportion. So if we look through that in a second, uh, we want to make sure that we understand first the, the angles up here on our triangle. So it's really a common mistake um, to, to say that the angles correspond the incorrect way. So if we look at um, these pieces, right, it's a little bit strange that C corresponds to B on these triangles, on the red and the green. Um, and if we think about why, let's look at our angles here. Right, D corresponds to D. Well, that's good. Uh, but C and B and... and um, a and C don't seem to match up the same way. So if we look at the big triangle, right, the one on the outside, these are those angles. And then if we look at inside, well, since I know that triangles always add up to 180, right, and I was given on my large triangle 90, angle A and angle B, those three have to add up to 180. And then again, I have a 90 A, so this has to be the same as B in this triangle which means that this angle over here has to be the same as A. And so that's where our similarity statement comes from. Um, we want to think about it really carefully when we match these things up. Triangles inside of triangles uh, aren't necessarily as simple as you think. You might want to say that it was triangle A, D, C, and triangle B, D, C, but they don't match up that way in terms of angles. So, so take your time. That will be a potential error that you want to avoid. All right, let's get back to the geometric mean. Um, and so what we think about is we set this proportion up. And then you know how to solve them. You cross multiply. If I cross multiply, I get x squared equals ab. And then I get x is the square root of a times b. And so if we think about what we have here as a condition, right, I have a and b are both positive. Well, that's good because I'm going to guarantee a positive square root and a real number. If one of them was negative, we'd have imaginary answers, and that doesn't make a lot of sense in geometry. And so uh, this will be our, our general um, setup for these, uh, for our geometric mean. All right. So we have some examples. We can find the geometric mean <coughs> excuse me, of two numbers. So we just set them A and B to be 3 and 12. I'm going to skip through these relatively quickly because you're going to do these on your own. Um, but we can write a proportion. We can substitute, we can cross multiply, take the square root, and then simplest radical form we can go from there. What I want to talk about more is the corollary here. So a corollary, right? A corollary is uh, something that follows a theorem, and it's so it's attached to this previous theorem. 
And so this one tells me the length of an altitude to a hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric ring of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. Okay, so this is a picture we were looking at before, right? Remember, what is an altitude? It goes from this vertex perpendicular to this side and divides it up into two pieces. So let's try to draw a picture and go from there. All right. So there's my hypotenuse and there's my uh, altitude, right? So I have an altitude and I have um, my hypotenuse. And you can see it's going to get divided up into two pieces. And so we're going to call those pieces A, B, and C, all right? And it's told me that the length of the altitude is the geometric mean. And remember from before, that means that proportion can get set up. So that's A. That's B plus C. Right? And then the segments are B and C. So this, all of this wording goes to this proportion right here. All right? We draw a picture, make a proportion. And from here, it's pretty simple. You could cross multiply, right? You get X to the square root of BC. So the reason why it follows uh, is really, um, it, it just follows our theorem and our definition of what a geometric mean is. It's nothing really different. Okay. Okay. And so if uh, we have an A, right, so we just used X from before uh, for our definition. If we substitute it in, we get the same piece there, right? We could have probably called this X to start with, uh, but we get the same answer in the end. And you can look at page 392 again if you want more information on it. All right, this next one is really confusing. Uh, there's a lot there. And so, again, it's the same pieces that we've seen before, but uh, we want to make sure that we divide it up the same way. And so what we have is uh, the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, okay, talking about right triangles, whole section, uh, separates the hypotenuse so that each leg of the triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the adjacent hypotenuse segment and the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so the length of each leg of the triangle. Well, where are the legs of the triangle? Well, this is the hypotenuse, right? So these are my legs. So somehow we're talking about the legs. And we want to uh, deal with that uh, as we set this up. So we have a lot of numbers here that we can pick from, right? Here's my altitude, so that corresponds with this piece. And then the adjacent segment of the hypotenuse. All right, so let's try to pick it apart and see what we're talking about here. So if we look through this, and I start trying to color code each piece. So I have the hypotenuse and the length of the leg of a triangle. So there's that red one in this case y, right, is the geometric mean. So that's that proportion that we're talking about. All right, let's get the other piece here. So the adjacent hypotenuse segment. So adjacent, here's my leg. The adjacent segment is here. It's attached. X is attached through point B, All right? This piece over here is not attached to y. This is another leg, so it's not part of the hypotenuse. All right, and then um, the length of the hypotenuse. Well, the length of the hypotenuse the whole thing is, in this case, 2 plus x. And so now I have those pieces figured out. The only piece I'm missing is geometric mean. All right? What's the geometric mean? It is that proportion. So I know that, um, that it told me uh, that the length of those pieces go together. And so I can set up my geometric mean. All right? And I get y over y. That becomes my geometric mean. Um, and x and x plus 2 on those pieces. All right, so that's my setup. And it takes a little bit of practice and, and to get used to it, but you just want to make sure that you grab the correct pieces. So again, the length of the leg of the triangle, so each, here's the leg, is a geometric mean. So that's where the y became that piece, because that stands for my geometric mean. And then I had to take these two pieces for uh, the adjacent hypotenuse segment and then the whole hypotenuse segment. Right? And again, we could do this differently with um, point Z over here, right? So for point Z, this is a leg. That's the adjacent piece. The whole piece of the hypotenuse is still that. And notice we haven't even really used the 6 yet, so that we could use that for a different piece. But for right now, um, we are just setting up these pieces of our, uh, of our legs, all right? And so if we wanted to use it from before, this is the before piece. So this, again, 
is my altitude, which becomes my geometric mean of these two pieces, right? Of this and this. So 2 and x, and then I have 6 and 6. So 2x equals 36, x is 18. Well, now things are going to start to fall into place because I can put x in here and then solve for y, right? And then I can put x in here and then solve for z. So I use all of my pieces to solve this triangle. So I can get y is uh, the is 6 root 10, and then plug in x for z and go from there. Let me go back for a second. So this takes a long time to read and to understand, but it's all of our pieces there. And every time what we're trying to get down to is some proportion. All right. And then the last one is an example. Again, you're going to do it in class, right? We can work through setting up the altitude. It's just like before, except with a word problem. Um, and then we have our 240 is our adjacent side, right? I'm going to pull this piece and then the whole hypotenuse. Uh, so that would be 192 plus x. Um, and then go from there as we work through it. So uh, I would cross multiply. I would be able to, um, I'd be able to solve this figure out what x is, and then uh, we would be done. It's just the math part from there of, of working through it. All right. If we had a second proportion that we're trying to set up, again, the setup is a hard part. I'm looking for y in this case, right? So if I'm looking for y, um, I again want to take the piece of the hypotenuse adjacent to it, and I want to take the whole hypotenuse, and now I know x, so that's good. Um, and if I work through it, right, I get my y squared <clears throat> just by cross-multiplying and then simplifying and go from there.